Okay. Uh, a little while along. Huh? Uh, <laughs> we're sitting with stock round for this guy. He's got an IOU of 12 bucks. He can't buy any more shares until he sells shares. Here's the problem with this. He's got his own shares, which he kind of doesn't want to sell. That will hurt his stock value in addition to killing, you know, in addition to him losing five bucks for selling. And these two shares, Bang Cheng, two permanent trains, the Hu Kong, permanent train, a whole pile of money. Okay, that whole pile of money is not going to be there. We're going to see some shifting there. I think this is worth selling, and then I can clear out my IOU. I don't know what I'll buy with it. I'll try to figure out you know, something reasonable <laughs> with the excess money. Not a whole lot of money to play with, obviously. Him uh, over here. Um, he uh, divested in one of these JLRs and bought one of his JHAs, which looks better with an 8 and a 4 plus 4. 4 plus 4 isn't going to last, probably. We don't know. We don't know how long. JHA is down here. Who's going to get an 8 train before that? I don't know. Um, but it's possible that someone does not. In fact, it looks very likely. Oh no, all of these still have to run. Yeah, those guys are going to eat it up. Okay. So, but still, I have an 8 train. I have reasonable running area and I'm trying to convince people this is a good railroad nobody's listening this guy bought one but only because his cash situation was such that that was the only thing that he had available after his sale of this to get the extra money he had to get something kind of cheap so uh, I don't think there was any movement here I think this guy passed as well. However, other people started divesting of the JLRs. And you can see the price is down to 70. It's not going down anymore. <laughs> um, but now we're on here. And this guy had no real option to start that extra company, the LHA or whatever. It wasn't enough cash. Bought another share of my own uh, BCR. Over here, he may have done the same with the HKR. Shifted a JLR to get that. This guy, though, has a lot of other shares. Now, some of them are decent. This in particular, these guys. Uh, others, maybe not so much. And I have a reasonable amount of cash. The advantage for this is I can get a lot more shares by starting this company. However, I have to calculate this all out because I want to make sure I'm not selling something that's decent and not replacing it, you know. Uh, so I've got to kind of figure out what my my appropriate price is for uh, for everything, you know, and whether or not I can slip it in at the 90, which nine times six, that's going to cost me 540 bucks, which is not small change. But my other companies don't look all that good. Now here's the thing. There's three operating rounds left, right? Each of these other companies, I think, is set to run in all three of them. Unless something really weird happens. GGR that. That one's pretty good with two permanent trains on it. This one probably is just going to buy that 4 plus 4, uh, assuming it gets a chance to. The AD might come out and then then this might lose a run. So this is up on the, yeah, that's not so great. Uh, JGG, looks like it has probably a pretty decent run. Uh, Chen Kung definitely does. This is probably my second worst rail. I'm glad that didn't pay out because I had the shares split, so I might not have, you know, I might have only paid it once if it had, but um, we haven't seen a lot of payouts because the last stock round wasn't long, wasn't all that long ago. Anyway, I'll do the calculations and let you know what came back. Engage in all that effort, 
Let's just think about this for a moment. Even if I start at 90, I only have 900 bucks, it's gonna cost me money. Secondly, if I hook up like this, I might not be making much of a run. This might get shunted, shunted away from me and then there's no way in. Uh, I'd have to try to fight my way, you know. Yeah, all yellow track, I can probably make it somehow, but yeah, does not sound pleasant. There isn't a lot of entrance here. I'm beginning to think this does not look like a good choice. Um, my QSRs are safe, so I'm just gonna look to see, is it, because getting that extra, yeah, I could get up to three extra certificates off of this. That's the problem. Uh, so if I had stuff that isn't gonna run, I could even run just this. There's some money here, but it just looks too, too chancy at this point. It looks too much like I'm going to end up spending money. Um, not, I won't get a run on the first run at all because company starts, right? Doesn't have a train. And then uh, otherwise, it doesn't look all that promising to me, honestly, because someone can just shut me out of there. Um, there's just too many companies running. So I'm going to pass on starting the new company as well. And really just look to see, do I want to ditch this and try to upgrade? Is there something better I can get? And better is kind of hard to say. If there were enough of these available, oh, that's, that's a dangerous company to be holding. Not because it'll get dumped on me because presidencies can't shift, but in the operating realm, but because that looks like it's not going to make a run, or it may very well not make a run. It's hard to tell, but this goes before it, which means to get the money all over to one place, the Ningxai is going to have to pull that money over. We're not sure. What did that make on its four plus four? Diddly squat. Yeah. <laughs> There's just not that much available that's really interesting. So let's assume all the four plus fours go away before anything else is gonna happen. I wanna get rid of these because they've got problems. I don't wanna buy companies that are having trouble. So for example, <laughs> I certainly don't want two shares of the Ningxai because that would, uh, that would just set me up. I'd end up owning it at that point. But beyond that, most of what's left to pick up is pretty much garbage if I get rid of these. And that's why people are holding the Hong Kongs. You can't get dumped on them and it's not that terrible. Um, but the other stuff just doesn't look that tasty. Um, JHAs aren't bad. Like I said, they're running an eight train. Uh, and that will not get dumped. So that's something I'm missing. I'm just looking because I have exact, I have 520. I'm just short of being able to buy 60% if I dump these shares. Uh, of course, that means though I have to give up one of these shares that I don't want to give up. And there are good companies out there to buy. So, yeah. All right. Uh, the CKR isn't bad. I have a bunch of shares of that. Maybe I want to boost its share price. Other than that, I indeed bought a share of that after dumping some more into the toilet. Remember, I pay a penalty for it, but <laughs> if you're selling a lot of shares, the penalty isn't as bad. So you only get charged five bucks per sale, but you could dump the price a couple of spaces as I did with the QSR. But here's the thing, this guy's only got 40% of the Chenko. Once I have 40% of that, he's gonna be forced to let something else go. It'll probably be this, but you know, whatever. At least it'll sell out, then I can buy other things as well. It's not by any means a bad railway. Um, that 60 is gonna help it a good deal. So here's the problem. This guy doesn't have the cash. Uh, he has 40 bucks here. If he sells this, it doesn't give him enough, right? 
that'll give them 70, 110. That's too high. So I have to sell something even better. I'll do it. Um, mainly not because it's all that important to this player. Because honestly, he can hold this on 40%. The, que the question is whether or not actually I care. I may just let it get taken over because if I sell this, I'm losing something that produces better revenue than my own company. If I let him take this over, I just get an extra certificate. But I have the same shareholdings because I'm under 11, so there's no problem with that. So I think I'll let him take over, and that'll give this guy somewhat of an edge. He gets an extra certificate out of it. Um, the alternative is to try to deprive him at hurting myself, but I don't think I'm in the running for winning no matter what happens. So I might as well let him take it. Lines with priority in the same place with presidency here and after selling out some of the stock prices have risen on some of the more attractive stocks as opposed to the ones that were very unattractive. This guy is not buying another train. He doesn't have any cash. So I slide him down. I've got these markers here to indicate the three rounds remaining because there's no counter for that and that'll help as I uh, whenever I finish the JGG I gotta remember to pull one of those off and when the third one goes it's all done. The game here feels pretty smooth although I'm running kind of smaller lines here the Jing line you know trying to break its way out one way or another right <laughs> had to pay money for that track lays. I have some but I kind of like some of it for dots. <laughs> It might be able to, I don't know. <laughs> you know, this is like 50 bucks to get down here. And that looks like a really, well, maybe not that pleasant. Maybe 40 here makes more sense. Or if I can break in, that may make more sense than any of this. Uh, we'll just have to see what we're doing and you know how, how people try to deny us but we're trying to open up different directions. The Ding Sai had a nice possibility. Hey, they got track lays, not everybody has that. Able to break their way and drop a dot down. And now they're in a pretty good position, actually. Um, did not swallow. I'm gonna end up having to pay about 100 bucks out of pocket. If I swallowed, it would have cost me 120. <coughs> I'm counting on having to pay 100. It's hard to tell. There's only two of these ADs. So, uh, I don't see any of them falling right away. There might be one over there. They got a thousand bucks between their two lines. But other than that, I don't see anybody else grabbing one. So, that means the 900, or the 800 bucks I have here plus another hundred bucks gets me in with the QSR and it's gonna actually be pretty good, but it ends up crashing once uh, and that's about it and as we hit the bottom of the barrel here Queen Shen forced to buy a train 100 bucks out of pocket gets itself the first 80 all four plus fours are gone you'll see some companies have you know, a problem <laughs> uh, just the one yeah because they were the other one with the problem uh, note that this does not move down. We're at the cleanup phase. And we're not worried about stock rounds anymore. We had all of them. <laughs> it's just running as hard as you can, as well as you can. Uh, QSR is fortunate enough to be able to build track. So they're upgrading, trying to find a way to break out. They have many options here. <laughs> the one that's bad is if they end up curving in. But going down may not be too terrible. What they're really looking to do is cut across here and maybe play in JLR land, which doesn't sound like the most promising thing, but JLR has cash. QSR doesn't have tokens. No one else is getting in there right now unless the UU gets upgraded. It's possible JLR will build down to try to get us to Lhasa or something like that, and that would be really sweet. Uh, 
right now. I mean, I can run as far as I like and I just get to count eight cities and that's great. You know, I like the E-trains are awesome if you have room. But unfortunately, this doesn't really have a lot of room. Um, currently, it could swing up here. It pays for the uh, ports though, so that's not optimal. Nowhere to go here, so I'd have to come back down. Well, that doesn't really help. Um, if I'm hitting a 30 and a 40, well, let's try this way. We get down here, we're hitting some doinks. There's one of the 30s that we missed, another, another 30, no 40 yet, but these can be upgraded. I hit this 40, but from there, we're kind of stuck. So we're looking at one, two, three, uh, four, five, only a six train in terms of decent big cities that might score a lot of points. And many of them are not very ritzy anyway. So I don't know what we want to do. I'm not sure this was my best move. There might have been, uh, there might have been a better way out, but it's really hard to tell. This is pretty clamped down right now um, with the inability to, with no brown track, it really kind of hurts. They don't have the kind of flexibility I'm used to. Anyway, to clean up and uh, then we start up at the top again. Well, <laughs> the BCR did a really nice run, obviously with two big six trains, one to six E and a lot of uh, space. Basically, there were two choices. One was to loop around here with one of the sixes, and the other was, I think, to run this. 21 and 23 for the one train. The other two trains, both, the other two options, both ended up rounding it up to 50 a run, uh, to a 50 run, and oops, Kind of counted it, but then forgot about it. There's an extra five bucks, 55 because of the uh, stock value. They are after running a 29 run, picks up its bonus two train. I'm not sure it wants it, but yeah, it looks like Shinkang is gonna get one too. So yeah, it does want it. <laughs> um, that's gonna complicate the procedure in terms of finding the run. Plus it's hitting up into the plus 15 per share, so that's pretty sweet too. Uh, making some pretty good money just based on the stock value bonus. That That's a really nice thing because the stocks here, eh, it feels a little flatter than most of the 18xx games do at the end of the stock market, but this gives you cash, so it kind of makes up for it. So you don't have like the really staggered stock market, but I'm not sure how much it made sense that stock value pumped up so much. In a way, it makes more sense that it's cash. Just when you start thinking about the topical value, you know, the big companies, um, their name, their prestige, etc., that may make them more money. It doesn't make their stock more volatile, <laughs> which is what this does it too, but the other games do it in a more significant way. If anything, their stock values tend to kind of level out as they get up high. For game reasons, that doesn't make, that doesn't really work, but uh, I guess, but this attempts to redress it a little bit at least. And a big line of companies have gone here. Uh, our biggest, still the BCR there. QSR hasn't gone and it may be making less. We're not sure, it had a couple of trains if I recall correctly last time. SCR, WNR both made 31 plus their bonus, of course. So uh, SCR made 41, and next time that goes up to 46. So the money's starting to crank on, on these. You know, that gets it close. The BCR is making five more, so it's 55. But the actual run value isn't the only thing in play here, and that's kind of nice. So, and of course, there's also the stock value, which again, this goes up by 10, these go up by five for the next three rounds. So, actually, it's gonna be bigger boosts at the very end. Uh, we got two more $20 boosts. 
So total value is higher than it seems, and that's standard for an XX game, but the fact that you're getting more cash is kind of neat. We're up to the first company that got to, gets to lay track in a long time. Uh, and then we're hitting a lot of the newer companies, which will be able to do so uh, until we get to this one. Yeah, so now it's time to start tweaking and tinkering, not necessarily for the line that's doing it. It might be able to help its partner line because all of these companies are sitting, somebody's sitting on two, two companies. Uh, not this guy, he's on his own. So he lost his second company. I had to go back in value, but buys the last of the AD trains. And now none of these are gonna get used, but remember we didn't bring two of the companies out. There's an infinite number of 10 trains. There's only four in the counter mix. And I doubt that four would be used very often. Uh, the reason being, I'm just not seeing, comp maybe, depends on play obviously, but I'm not seeing a lot of companies sitting on a whole lot of money. And why do they have $250 and did not buy a two train? Let's not make that mistake. No, that's not 250. Then it's because the reds are fives, not 25s. Excellent. Okay, that's why. They're real close. Um, but it's not worth a swallow to have happen. And it's not worth juggling trains. There's just nothing good that could happen out of it. It's just excess money. Um, okay, so the thing is, I mean, maybe there's enough play that you might get one of these out with more companies in play, but there's no real incentive to be going for them. They're not as good as the 80s for the most part. I don't know. I mean, the 80s allow you to skip over really horrible areas where there's just a lot of $20 spaces. The 10 has to run over them. If you're in a really, really rich area where you've got 10 cities line it great, but that's almost not never going to be the case. You don't have many dots, so you're probably going to be only able to run big trains where there's a lot of doinkers <coughs> that aren't blocking you out. Although there are cities that upgrade to the three space that you could sleaze in. Um, but the other thing is they're just so expensive for what they are. And, you know, I mean, at the very least, it means probably an extra swallow that somebody has to make. The fact that they don't kill anything means that they're not going to drive the game forward and force, you know, other purchases or anything like that. People, you know, they're, they're, there's no other train that's going to die that somebody was relying on. <laughs> so it's a little different. A uh, couple of the other games that I have where the trains don't fall... Uh, 1870, 2038 are the biggest examples of that that I remember. I think some others, though, were like that, like either uh, uh, 180E, Orient Express, or EU. One of those two, maybe both, had kind of a the trains didn't all come out uh, type dynamic to it. But, you know, at least the two that I remember, and I think those other ones, that extra train that didn't come out might be worth it in some cases just because you could do a lot of damage to runs that are established and doing well. The problem is you have to take one hell of a hit usually to get that last train out. Unless somehow somebody engineers it so that you had to buy it, dumps a company on you or something like that. Here it's possible. Oh. But by the time you're going to have to buy a 10... All the stock rounds are already done, and they've been done for quite a few trains. There's four trains uh, that have to come out before you're forced to buy the tent. So there has to be a lot of carnage for that to come into play. And that may happen if there's enough swallowing and people 
hoarding things on certain companies, you might end up with something horrible if you're not being careful and you have too many shares of somebody else's company. But, you know, I think it's highly unlikely. Uh, you might see one and it's probably not desired. <laughs> JGG still able to build track. Upgrades here. Prevents anybody from slipping through. I don't really care. Chen Kung is not really likely to be heading up that way. Can't really get there, so. Um, and that's the other thing that I have 40% of. And the, uh, um, my other stocks I don't have enough of to really care about too much. But one of them is the Biao Chang, which is perfectly happy with this. And runs for 36, which is not bad. Big 8 train coming out of uh, here and running down here. Can't get through the boinkers. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's just, without the E train, it just isn't possible. It's a pretty decent run, but stock value is so shitty. It didn't get inflated, and I'm only making five bucks extra for stock value on that. That's the end of the first round and we got two more to go so we finished the last run uh, coming through here now these guys don't get they already got a run in their first operating this is their second round but i'm following this thing because i reset it afterwards oh uh, what did we see a little bit of improvement on some of these guys like hkr QSR running that big 8E was only able to get to 33. They're having a lot of trouble breaking out. Basically, they can't get beyond this lock. This could conceivably upgrade and let them through, but it would take two track upgrades. And eh, I don't know. I mean, they moved a 32 to a 33, so... You know what, I'm, I'm going to actually run just 32 and do that upgrade on the chance that I can break out and get some more money. I'm not going to win this game with them. They're doing pretty piss poor, but getting a better run would impress me. Say that, uh, wherever the, uh, there it is. Yeah, there's one ooh, ooh upgrade, and actually it wouldn't help. It's only a two city. There's no, there's no three spot ooh, ooh upgrade. So, all the gray cities are out except for this one. <laughs> Which, kind of like Beijing, nobody really wants to upgrade it because a lot of people are hitting it. Um, and it doesn't let anybody through. So it's kind of a, Beijing's a little more impressive. It goes, oh, here's the other thing. It's not a shortage. Anybody can put that there. It will be there for the rest of the game. So like upgrading a green to a brown, those brown tiles might not be there. Upgrading a brown to a gray, there are no more gray tiles to upgrade in most cases. So the Beijing and Shanghai pieces, because they're reserved, end up not getting upgraded quickly. Uh, Beijing might get upgraded a little more quickly because it's a 20 point upgrade. A lot of people are using it. But then again, a lot of people using it means they're all like, well, it's not really necessarily my problem. I'm just going to help other people if I <laughs> build that. I might as well, you know, get the thing where I'm the only one with the token there. Or I'm one of the two people with a token, whatever. This guy, he actually is the only one with a token there because he's had that uh, Trans-Siberian, which of course got killed. Uh, just in terms of the trains got too big to run it. You know, it's conceivable you could do something around there, but it just didn't hook up. Uh, it's too much work, you know. Once you start running up there, you're like, well, why don't I hit Beijing? All right, so we do the mechanical aspect of resetting everything and go through another full round. We have something of a bell ringer now. The 66E got us up to, in part because this opened up, it's not going to last forever, but it allowed my run come down to here uh, got me up to 58 and 63 with the bonus that's a pretty damn good run I've seen bigger you know this seems to be doesn't seem to give you runs that are 
on the ridiculously high side. Maybe, I mean, they're possible, but nobody's got a lot of tokens. There's a lot of companies, and the cities aren't all that rich, although they tend to be richer, you know, with these gray tiles than they are in many of the games. And we've run through the early high starting railways. Let's BCR is still ahead. Uh, SCR doing quite well, and especially it's got the 15 bonus, so it's 10 points higher relative. It's almost as high as the BCR is. Uh, CKR also has the 10 point bonus, and it's falling behind in the money. Uh, the two train, that extra two train, it's certainly worth having, but you know, the SCR, for example, there is wasn't bad because they have a dot here so they could hit these two for 90 but for a lot of the companies you're just looking at uh you know because it's not an e-train or anything what are the two closest city you know what are two cities that are adjacent to each other essentially that one of them i have a dot in and i'm not using any of the track so i think they use this little seven here because their track <laughs> made a mess out of their one good city, you know. So. And no ability to upgrade this. If I could have upgraded that, I could hit something out of there, but no. And it's beginning to cause me problems is these open dots and these big train runs. <laughs> because, I mean, he's all set up was planning on doing all kind of running here, but now I've got to start calculating out, okay, how about this coming down here? Does that help me in any way? Oh, I've got this, okay. Yeah, it looks pretty blocked. There's so many doinkers. It probably isn't gonna do me much good. That 50 bucks, if I can get it, is probably my best option. But you end up having to balance a lot more choices. Uh, when the board is relatively uh, open. I've come up with a potentially better run than just zigging through all this crap down here, which involves, as long as this dot, as long as nobody dots in, I can run from here. And I don't have my dot there, but I don't need it. Doink, boom. And then down this way, it actually ends up significantly better, about 50 bucks better, because I'm not hitting as many doinks. <coughs> okay, and I am taking that into play. But for it to really work, and I can improve it again with a connection there, for it to really work, I need to make my track light here. Okay, sounds great. Yeah, except I've got this thing too. Oh, no, I don't. I have the Bizuja. Uh, yeah, the track light probably will not help or hurt them. I don't think they need another track. I hope. I don't know. <laughs> this is just... It, it, it's so painful. Um, because this guy can't build any of his own track. So if he's going to improve his route, it has to be by way of the Xingha. And as long as they're working together, you know, out of here is fine. Running out this way, maybe not, but maybe because I'm over there. So, all right, we'll see. And JR with the huge 8E train, but also, it breaks onto the scene with a 39 run, uh, but also, which is pretty damn good, that's the third best right now in terms of just pure run, but stock value um, I, the 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 thing that I noticed here though is look at this central location between the Beijing area and the Hong Kong French Indochina now I finally was able to make a break I think yeah it involves going <laughs> um, I finally was able to make the connection through here which opened up French Indochina. Hong Kong has not been available to them because of the way this track is constructed. Uh, although actually it was. Shit. 
Uh, I could get to Hong Kong instead. I, I think I can up that value a little bit. But it's probably a buck because it's probably the difference between this and this because I've got this 40, I got this 30 if I need it. The E train is really sweet. Uh, so let's just bump that up a buck and give him wherever he is five bucks more. Um, but I'm noticing that across the line, if we look at the companies, the BCR has this nice central track using two trains, but the same kind of setup running from Beijing down to those southern areas. The SCR, the same thing. They've got that clear open. It could be caught, but it isn't right now. Uh, so they're able to get their good run. Uh, CKR is not in quite that position. Uh, why is it working well? I'm not sure. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, it does not, it has an E train, so it can skip over shit and it can get through here now. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. It's just running down here, making some good money. But the first, the top three are in that position. Now, are there companies that are in that position that are not in the top? Well, I don't know. The WNR, but things may have opened up since then. Yeah, the WNR doesn't have this branch. It doesn't make it to Beijing. It's like the CKR stuck down here, unlike the CKR doesn't have the extra deuce. Uh, so yeah, it looks like uh, JGG. JGG is running pretty well. They've got an eight. And with this opening up, they, I think, will be able to do significantly better because their problem has been the doinkers. They don't have the E-train, so they can't just ignore that crap. Uh, so that's, that's promising. I don't know. We'll see. But it seems to me that you know, the big money comes from this route you could, is avoiding the doinkers. And I'm sure there are ways you could build where the doinkers are avoided on either side because there's a whole bunch here but it was just a decision the players who were involved in certain areas wanted things more open or whatever so they go the, for the doinkers um, rather than regular cities where they'll get dotted out but over here it's kind of a big sparse route with just a few key cities and if you have the dots on those you're golden you know uh, anyway it's not always obvious which route is going to be the best in the game. And I, I did not, uh, was not sure about this because a lot of times it's run near the big city and hit all kind of other kind of high value cities that are near it. Um, that doesn't seem like it's working as well. I'm not sure anybody's really doing it. <sighs> but, you know, here it would really mean trying to set things up so you're doing a quick loop Beijing to Beijing and what can you hit on it? Well, that works fine in the mid game, but in the late game, the trains are just too big, I think. During the second round, ran through these guys. Uh, everybody's gotten a run now. So this is closer to the eventual numbers. There might be changes though. There's a dot potential there. Nobody's seen a I don't know if anybody's got the money and a dot. Uh, so I don't think we'll see any more dots because everybody who's got a dot over on this side does not have the cash that they need to play it. A little bit of track building, but it definitely speeds things up not to have that agonizing over where you can try to place a track for so many things. Yes, it's a little harder on the company that might be placing for itself or for another company. That's always kind of a part of the game. Um, anyway, these are our price values. And of course, keep in mind, the high stock value guys are cranking in quite a bit more than that, not just on the stock value, but on the actual run chart as well. And we did a little mechanical dance again. I think I got things wrong. I put this back after having taken it off. I think we're actually on the last run here because 
the first run after the eight the the last eight train was bought involved people crashing everybody made money on this last sequence and at least some of these um, well I'm trying to think what, I, what I'm saying these guys up here did not just complete their first run they completed their second run so this is indeed gone and these guys are not getting another run I just so we're pretty close to the end actually I think I've run to the end uh, with these guys not getting an additional run pretty sure I'm right in terms of the number of times I've gone through this actually didn't get upgraded in time for anyone to use it uh, the NK, uh, NJR upgraded it I was thinking the HKR was going to get to run it. And then I realized they weren't. But then I looked and said, well, the JGG is not going to hit it, so we'll just leave it there. But that's kind of impressive that Shanghai didn't get uh, upgraded fully for reasons I've expressed. There's some brown track that hasn't gotten used yet. This piece could have been used. It, again, the JGG didn't want to go through there particularly. didn't help them. Um, this wouldn't have worked for them. They basically needed a, a three from here. And this is too expensive, and this would be too expensive. So they had to go into Indochina. Oh. Flip these counters over. And right now all that's left is to count the score. And do that a little later. Got uh, angst. Uh, shit. This was here. Um, trying to figure out where the hell. Just a lot of things, but one of them that I don't mind <laughs> expressing, although it's not a big deal at all, and that may be why. I'm trying to figure out where the hell, how I'm going to store my games here. Um, this is. I think all my war games are going to go up here, and you know, I, you can see the mess. <laughs> but uh, it's been the where the shelves go, and how well all these non-war games, which are of different shapes and sizes, are going to fit on the shelving, and what that all means. And uh, the room I wanted to put them in doesn't have room for all of them. There's another better room downstairs, but I don't see any gaming happening down there. Um, if I, like, my wife would be unhappy if I brought people to game down there. And it's just, anyway, I don't know why I'm babbling this. It's my usual misery. Right. And when we saw the piles of money and the particular stocks, we had a pretty good idea who the likely winners would be when we run this out yeah it begins beginning becoming pretty obvious we have two people up at the top one and three we'll talk about this in a little bit they're not too far apart about a hundred bucks apart a uh, little difference in the portfolio this guy had more stock holding that guy was able to generate more cash because of this monster if he hadn't been the guy to fall into two real permanent trains and the only guy to do so. <coughs> I think we could say with some assurance that he probably comes in second in that case. But that final round made him uh, a fair amount more money, 300 bucks more money, whereas the stock value was about a 200 buck difference uh, between the two. <sighs> Both had full uh, certificate pulls. I think most of the players actually did not. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, six, seven, eight, nine. Neither one had any kind of special higher than 20% shares. This guy had an extra company, which he managed to take over. And that helped him quite a bit because that gives him an extra share that's producing, right? The rest of the players all ended up kind of hosed. 
And I think we have a pretty good idea of why. Let's start looking at them over here. Uh, this was this, and he had the red to begin with. These two, these two, and those two. Every single one of the players who didn't come in close, and I mean, there's a significant uh, drop, right? We're looking at uh, over $1,000 between second place and uh, third place here. Uh, third place being this guy who had a fairly nice railway, but... And it all has to do, to, to what I can tell, with having started those extra companies. Starting a second company did not seem to be good. Now, is that just generally a rule here? I don't think so. I don't think it is. I think that so many of them started at the few stock rounds that there are, though, um, with this many players that there just wasn't enough resources to keep them all running. Um, so much track was already built. Seven companies start the game. You probably don't see that in less players, that it was harder to break in with some of these. So it's just a combination of things made it tough. The trains fell so fast. Uh, they were denied the ability to start at 100 bucks. Only one of them started at 90 so they didn't have a huge cash uh, flow coming in to help anything. It's not like they could save another company or anything. So I think that's probably the singular item which did the most damage. You'll also see it's kind of reflected in the stock and the uh, payouts with the companies that were there early showing up in a fairly high proportion in the highest runs. This guy kind of fell into his run with luck. And this guy, you know, when he started, it was pretty clear that he had a nice run going. If the NXR had been starting around the same time, they'd be fighting. But he was able to basically mirror the BCR's run <coughs> in terms of the, the token placement and get a pretty good setup. Um, But yeah, otherwise, I think the hit of starting the companies was just larger in this than I'm used to it being in an, in an XX game. And this is especially funny because it feels like there should be an advantage, but part of it comes down to nobody, and maybe again it's the number of players, but nobody reached, or a lot of people didn't reach their certificate limit. These guys were at certificate limit uh, early, actually. Uh, not sure about him, but he was at certificate limit before entering that final round. And yet, he got overcome by that huge run. Um, anyway, it's, uh, it's some, interesting, some interesting facets about the game that I wouldn't, that I didn't bring as thoughts at all that are kind of surprising to me because I don't think I've seen another XX game appear so clearly that it was a bad idea to start additional companies. Uh, I, I, I really think some of it has to do with these, you know, nice track lays early on that were claimed and then were difficult for some of these companies to get into. But it can't be the only thing because this guy didn't do terribly well. And, you know, he fell into as good a, a token position as any of the other companies had a good train. It really has to do, I think, with not being poised. Let's take a look at these, the three companies of the players that did well. Okay, so he's got this. This, he had a couple of shares of it early on, but both of these got the 6E2 combination. This guy got the 6E6 combination, which is, you know, Obviously, very strong. If we look elsewhere, how did player five do? Well, he got hurt. Uh, he, he did not do well at all, particularly. It was player four who somehow did okay. Um, 
This guy got shut out of a two train by like five bucks, 10 bucks, 10 bucks, eh, 15 bucks maybe, 35, yeah. Um, but if you look at some of these companies, and not this one, but some of the others that are sitting out here, this player, I'm not sure why he's doing as poorly as he is, but we'll, we'll try to think about that somehow over here. They had to buy expensive trains. And now when you're starting a company at 80 and there's only $800 in the treasury, getting a $900 train on there and laying your tokens and everything, that's going to pose a burden on something. And I think it posed a burden on this. Ah. Uh, I don't know what else to say, you know, I mean, there obviously it's tactical decisions that, that hurt as well that maybe aren't clear right now, but, you know, just doing the assessment uh, uh, from this, uh, this point, you know, after the game and everything, it kind of feels to me like the mistake lay on starting companies. And I know with some of the, with some of the players, I was very leery of starting a company. I mean, like this J, JLR here. I, I wonder why this guy didn't do well. Well, he started what was really a truncated company that wasn't able to do well. And you can see in the end, it ended up with a 22 run. The worst of the entire lot. And, you know, that 30% share doesn't make up for it when three, six, seven, eight, I'm only holding nine shares total. Uh, assuming that I actually scored all his shares, I'm a little worried that maybe I didn't. This is player six here. So I've got 12.85 for him. Uh, that's 500. 585. So I don't know. Yeah, I counted them all in. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's that's where we ended up with it all. Uh, let me give some. I'll, I'll, I'll give the thoughts on the the game itself, within the context of XX games. Not you know, uh, after after uh, after this loads up and once I get it all cleaned up, and cleanup's going to be kind of a bitch on this one. Uh, cleanup's always painful in an XX, but. I think this one's going to be particularly <coughs> troublesome in some ways, maybe because of the smaller trains. I'm not sure. Something just worries me a lot about it. All those companies, that's definitely a factor. And there are, there are quite a few different kinds of trains. Uh, there's these additional certificates here or, or little cards for the, uh, for the engineer.